and let's paint. So looking at the reference material, I usually like to start with the darkest areas of the painting, or at least start in a very dark area that allows me to assess the contrast as I'm working. We are working on a neutral grey background, so it's nice to set the real darks down and start to build up a contrast right from the beginning. I'm going into the eye socket simply with pure black, just to create the very darkest areas. Now this video is speeded up by about 50%, so it's not at actual speed, I'm not, I'm not painting that fast. As we move down through the eye socket, I'm going to pick up some darker grey just to start transitioning from the black into the lighter areas of the eye socket. Now, the eye socket is predominantly quite dark all the way to the bottom, so it only really comes up from black to about a middle tone of all the tones that we've mixed. So what I'm going to do is just map that in because that way we've got a nice gradient from black all the way through to sort of a middle tone that sets the contrast levels out for us to start building the rest of the painting around it. I'm using the flat brush a lot in this painting and you'll see when we come to certain areas that even though it looks like it would benefit from using a smaller brush I'm still sticking with the flat brush which is it's not large but it's large enough that it really takes a little bit of concentration in certain areas to get the effect that you want but this all leads back to what I was talking about in earlier videos about decision making if we try to stick with a larger brush or something that feels almost like it's a little bit too large for what we're trying to paint then what we have to do is really make a decision about carefully using that brush to put paint onto the surface. As you can see in these larger areas, like I'm working on now the cavity uh, behind the nose, then it's fairly straightforward. I'm simply applying a flat tone of paint, adjusting it and then picking up other tones to work them in around it. But when we get to somewhere like this area, which is the the far eye socket with black, then I'm really having to think about carefully placing each brush stroke so that I describe the shapes that are on the reference without just picking away in a, in a finicky way that kind of takes texture away and takes emotion out of the painting. What we're going to aim for by the end of this painting is something that isn't a super, super finished piece we're not going to go into background on this session, we're simply going to paint the skull. But what we're going to aim for is a rendition of a skull that has a lot of very visible decision making in it. Um, I'm achieving a lot of that by sticking with this larger brush wherever possible because it does make those decisions very apparent to whoever is viewing the painting. Now, as you can see, we've worked into both eye sockets. We've got the black in there, we've got the dark gray, and some of the mid grays behind the nose. And now we're working into the nasal cavity. And this is exactly what I'm talking about, using the edge of that brush to really sort of pick away at those little areas without losing texture. Strong decision making. Moving over to above the eye sockets now, again we're moving back to a mid-tone because what I want to do really to begin with is kind of get that front edge of the skull mapped out so that we've got a range of tones from dark all the way up to fairly light as you can see we're pulling in the very edge of the skull there because once we've got that whole set of tones in, we can kind of lean back from the painting and go, okay, that area is a little too light, that area is a little too dark, and we can start to adjust. Now, when I'm talking about adjustments, one thing that we want to try and do initially as we begin a painting is avoid making too many adjustments. 
and this is certainly something that will benefit a lot of people that aren't as experienced as painters. If we make strong decisions early on and we lay brush strokes down side by side without working too much over paint that we've already laid down, then to begin with, we're avoiding moving paint around too much on the canvas or the board. And the important thing about that is we want to create a nice even layer of paint across the whole painting before we start to try and adjust what's already been laid down. If we put paint down, say across the front of the nose here and then decide, oh hang on a minute, that's too light and we try to darken it up immediately and then further into the paint we go, oh hang on, no that wasn't too light, let's lighten it back up again. What we can end up doing is adding layer and layer of paint until instead of adjusting what's there, we'll end up just pushing paint around and really losing definition. Number one, we'll lose definition of brush strokes and number two, we'll lose definition of the tonal values that we're trying to achieve. You can see a lot of the time that I'm kind of gesturing with my brush before I'm laying it down on the canvas. And that's kind of part of my personal decision making process. I tend to almost audition brush strokes before I place them down. And sometimes I'll, I'll move the brush around like a pointer above the canvas, judging where one shade should go in relation to another. So I'm spending a lot of time looking at my reference and then I'm looking at the board and judging, right, this dark tone goes here. So where does this slightly lighter tone go in comparison? So when you see me moving my brush around without actually making any marks, that's me kind of mentally measuring where I'm gonna put my next brush strokes. So we're moving on to the top of the skull now, just to start to build some of that dome to create a, a real depth, because up till now we've got the eye sockets, we've got the nasal socket and the shadow in behind the nose. But what we really want to do now is move around a little bit more, get a little bit stronger with our brush strokes and start to really build light to dark to, to create that feeling of, of 3D depth perception in the painting. So moving over the top of the eye there, I've picked out a mid-tone, which obviously towards the back of the painting, there's gonna be a lot of darker tones, but initially I'm kind of picking up the mid-tones, working those in and around the top of the skull to give us a feeling of, of that nice curve over the top there. And then moving down underneath the eye socket again, finding the lighter areas and the mid-tone areas and carefully placing it brush stroke by brush stroke onto the canvas. Now this front area of the skull is really quite light so I'm going to come to a lot of that later on. But now we're getting those tones starting to surround that eye socket and brush stroke by brush stroke we can start to, to fill this out and really get a feeling of solidity so that that eye socket starts to drop back into the background. Even with a canvas that's toned sort of a neutral gray like this, it often feels until we've got the whole subject mapped in, like there is no depth and there is no solidity to what we're painting. And to be honest, that's something we just have to ignore in a way and it's certainly something that gets easy with practice to ignore those sections of the painting that aren't yet painted it can be super super hard to do that on a whiteboard especially but it still can be quite tricky even on even on a neutrally toned board like this So stroke by stroke, we're starting to move around the back of the eye and define that bone structure before bringing in some black, 
right behind that drop in there just again we want to create some depth now we've got a lot of that front area mapped in so let's be brave now let's get really going with the painting and start to throw all those dark tones in towards the back now I am going to apologize at this point because I know that the painting is a little glary in places but hopefully um, my bad cameramanship won't detract too much from what we're trying to achieve with the painting. Now at the bottom here, we end up moving into a shadow area that really is very indistinct. There's quite a, a blurred line between where the skull finishes and the shadow begins. So I've literally just thrown in some black at the bottom there that we're gonna bring the skull down to meet it. And then later on, we'll probably decide how much definition we want to put between the skull and the shadow and once we've got as much black in there as I feel there is I've assessed the reference I've looked at the very darkest areas of the back of the skull and I've decided that yeah that's pretty much all the areas that are black so I've pulled out my dark grey from the palette we mixed and I'm starting to work in from the black now without really blending. Again, I'm still just placing each brush stroke down. There's very few areas so far where I've attempted to, to blend any colors together. And now to get a sense of that edge, we're gonna pull some of the light tones up against that black there to get a contrast between the two. And we can start to work up towards that gap between the front and the back of the skull. <clears throat> Again, just assessing my mid-tones here and gradually moving from light to dark. We'll get to some areas in the painting or you may find that you get to areas in the painting where the tones that you've mixed up aren't quite dark enough or light enough and you need something in between and that's fine because we've mixed out sort of five tones or more it's fine at that point to actually gently with your brush pick up a darker tone and move it to an area of your palette where you can add a touch of a lighter tone into it just to find those in between places where we haven't quite covered all the tones that we need. Ideally, it would be great to have a palette with 30 or 40 different light to dark tones set out, but that's pretty unrealistic to be fair. And certainly for, for something like this, where we're just having a go, we wanna get something that feels dramatic. It feels like there's a lot of texture in there and a lot of expression. We don't really know, need to go into a crazy amount of palette mixing to produce something that looks pretty cool. And after we've worked over the top of the skull, they're now coming down the back side, getting those sort of lighter mid-tone greys in there just to really flesh out and make everything start to feel solid. Now you'll see that even with that gap over the eye, We've closed in a lot of the other gaps now, which is starting to give us a real sense of, of the shape of the skull as a 3D object. And once we get those last areas mapped in, then hopefully it should really change the way that the painting feels to look at. One thing to talk about as well is when we're talking about the differences between laying down initial colours and blending. Now I did say earlier on that we want to avoid blending and sort of laying down extra colours as much as possible until we've got the painting mapped in. I'm not going to over blend this piece, I'm maybe going to blend in a couple of places just to change the values ever so slightly once we've got it all in there. But one thing to note, when we're initially putting down the first layer of paint, we can be really quite forceful with the brush because we want that paint to properly bond with the canvas. So we're laying it down quite firmly, 
decisively yes gently yes but we want the paint to be on there so the difference between that and starting to blend colors over the top is we're using the paint pretty much the thickness that it comes out of the tube on the palette so we're not thinning it down at all we're literally just picking it up from the palette and placing it onto the canvas which means that it's not exactly a thin layer so if we do want to make adjustments if we do want to put another color over the top of anything we've laid down we need to do it gently we need to pick it up and just just with the tips of the brush just gently place it down so you can see I've switched to the small round brush here and I am adjusting some values ever so slightly and all I'm doing is picking up a slightly darker tone but instead of really pushing it into the board like I am doing with the first layers adjusting tones I'm merely gently placing that new tone over the top and by varying the pressure you can adjust how much you're either laying down new paint over the top or how much you're working the new paint into the layer underneath. You can probably see why I chose to pick up the round brush sort of at this point because we're getting into the tooth area which as much as we want to get a nice representation we don't want to go crazy we're not aiming for something photorealistic with this piece we're ex we're aiming for something that's an expression of a skull we want to have a sense of our identity in the painting not just uh, a perfect representation that could have been a photograph so I'm picking up the round brush simply so that we can start to get in some of these little edges and little details if you look at the reference photo then you'll see that there's some areas that simply are going to be too tricky to get into with that flat brush. And I'm kind of moving around a little bit. Part of my decision making process isn't to completely finish one area as I paint it. But as I start to build different areas of the painting, I'll, I'll have my eye drawn to various areas and it, it will be different for everyone. But I do find that when I'm painting, my eye will get drawn from one area to the next and it will be a feeling like, okay, I'm working on this section, I'm working on this section. And then for whatever reason, my eye will drift to another area and I'll, I'll go, oh, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to move over there. Just let's get that section in now because that's going to make it feel to me like we're getting nearer to where we want to be so even though we haven't moved all the way across the teeth at the bottom i felt my eye had been drawn more back towards the eye socket and to adjust some of the values up high now that we've got the round brush it's quite easy for me to just gently place some tones and ever so slightly move some tones around at the top of the skull there hopefully getting this area in just underneath the eye socket here will really start to give us a sense of something solid working with lighter tones and pulling them down starting to describe those little nuances underneath the eye socket and around the cheekbone area just ever so gently with that super light tone putting paint down with just the tip of the brush And then again, once I got that edge of the eye socket there, it made me go, oh, hang on, I just want to adjust that tone over there at the top of the, to the side of the forehead. And then move around with the light tones to the edge of the nose, which then prompts me to go, okay, well, the top of the inside of that nose cavity was a little too dark, so 
I'm going to adjust that ever so slightly. Even though we've not got the entire painting mapped in yet with the teeth, I feel like I'm at a place now where I can start to make a few adjustments as I'm moving around and filling in those last few gaps. I can start to make a few adjustments to what we've already painted. So I'm pretty happy with the nose cavity now. It's got a nice gradiated feel to the way the shadow drops inside. And then it's a case of, of really accentuating that bone that comes out down towards the bottom there and just going around the edge again. And then we'll move back to the teeth. As we're working with light tones, again, my eye has been drawn to where other light tones would be. And because we're starting to map those light tones in, then we're also starting to map the mid tones in. So it may look a little chaotic at times, but that's my thought process that you're seeing me paint with. This is kind of just the way that I do it. And it may be different for you. I'm not saying that this is wrong or right, but this is just the way that I make my decisions when I'm painting kind of wet on wet like this. There are of course many different ways to paint. There's layering where you can paint a very thin layer and let it dry and then paint another layer on top etc etc. If you know anything about painting then you may know a few of the different techniques but I really enjoy working wet in wet like this or a la prima where we finish a subject in one session because it it creates a sense of honesty you know we haven't waited a couple of days and then started to obliterate some of our earlier decisions and as much as that is useful in certain types of painting i think for something like this it's really nice to just be completely honest about the decisions we've made and not overwork them or not try to change the way that our decision making looks on the canvas just getting those real light turns into the teeth there. Now we aren't gonna to pay too much attention to the teeth because we could probably spend two hours trying to get every single little nuance, but what we're aiming for is just to get enough of a feel of solidity and the correct tones in there that when we step back from the painting, we get a real sense of realism mixed with a sense of expression. So we've got things solid now, which is pretty exciting. And all I'm doing now is going back in with that round brush and making some slight adjustments to how harsh those ridges are above the teeth. I did feel that they were a little too light, so I went back in with a mid-tone and just very gently moved it over the lighter tones and started to adjust them. I noticed a little bit of detail in the eye socket there, which we just made a gradient from black through to mid-tone before, so went back in, just touched in a little bit there, and really now, we're looking a lot more at the reference, we've got everything mapped in, so it's time to really pay attention to the reference and start to just put in whatever details we feel are completely necessary to make the painting closer to, to the reference. There's a few little cracks and a few little holes that are pretty much standard to any human skull, so I don't want to leave those out. And just, I mean, this round brush isn't tiny, but with careful use, you can get some pretty fine detail with even a larger brush. And just to finish off there, even though we're not going to paint a full background today, I want to give a sense of it sitting on something so I'm just pulling in a bit of a darker tone behind the skull there to represent the rest of the shadow 
and blurring the edges at the back of the skull there. So guys, there's the finished piece. I hope that's been useful. At some point, I think we're gonna do another video adding background just to create an extra solidity, but that's it for now. Any questions, give me a shout and I'll be as helpful as I can.